Welcome to part two of our three in a row extended Corona edition. My name is Bernie Gator and we got reason to celebrate. Which is why I already poured myself a nice dram of Kill Home and Sanic. Because we have more than 350 subscribers now and over 20,000 views. So here's to you. Hold on a sec. Slungy. Bing! Because this is your achievement entirely and all that I can do is thank you with all of my heart. It may not seem a lot, but for us it means the world. Slanjiva. I got exciting news to share. Number one, we have a new Facebook page that you can find here, where Mr. Smith will upload advertisements, statistical masterpieces like the ones just mentioned, news and behind the scenes material. And number two, we are on Instagram now, where I will share product shots and uh, photos from our whiskey travels. So you're more than welcome to take a look around and leave a subscription. Moving on, this brings us to our next point, which is three in a row. Let's go! today and therefore number two in our three in a row extended version comes from Ireland and is a Glendalach 13 year old that I bought for several reasons one being that I really enjoyed the seven year old another one being that the 13 year old spent its final days before bottling within the Mizunara cask wait what there's good reason why, at least until recently, no one ever heard of a Mizunara whiskey cask. One being that this tree grows unbelievably slow, it takes up to 200 years for it to grow. And it grows crooked, so it's really tough to make straight planks out of it in order to produce a barrel. The wood is really soft, so the barrels tend to be leaking. The angel's share is way higher than in a regular oak barrel. And the price for a barrel in the empty version is up to 6 gram. Which raises the question, why the hell would you do that? Well, after World War II, for understandable reasons, Japan didn't have access to American white oak anymore. So they had to use what was there. And again, they mastered the undoable, making whiskey barrels out of Mizunara oak. It takes several years to learn how to do so. And I think there are only a handful of places, all in Japan, where they know how to do so. What they didn't know at the time but nowadays are widely aware of is what extraordinary flavors uh, Misonara oak can bring to your whiskey, which justifies the high price and brings us back to why I purchased this whiskey, because I always wanted to try a Misonara finish. And while I do so, I hope you'll enjoy the little oncoming movie that tells my personal Glendalach story. Slanjiva. The story had its beginnings in the Republic of Ireland, next to its capital Dublin, that is located on the east coast, or to be precise a bit south of it in the so-called Wicklow Mountains. There lies Glendalach, which translates to a valley of the two lakes. A 
1400 years ago, the city of the Seven Churches was built, and I have told so eloquently in Vlog 18, as well as the legend of Saint Kevin. Das wohlhabende Familie stand da! and kept an especially close relationship to his feathered friends that loudly accompanied my lecture. But the search for the distillery of the name Glendalach had ended outside the valley facing an industrial container, leaving behind two very confused Austrians. I already had tasted and severely enjoyed the seven-year-old at the temple bar in Dublin, so I just could not let go of the whole thing. And as soon as I was back home, I got myself into extensive service to find out the following. This whiskey is Cooley juice, was distilled and matured at Cooley Distillery and purchased there by the founders of Glendalach in order to have a market entry until they will be able to bring out their own whiskey produced within their newly built distillery. Number two, according to our friend Whiskey Jason, and I really do trust him and his expertise, the whiskey was really good despite its very wooden and harsh aftertaste. And number three, the Glendalach dudes seem to know what they're doing. The idea of finishing the whiskey inside a Mizunara cask turns the spirit into a flavor bomb enriched with notes of coconut and pineapple, going down smooth and oily. The stylish design with the Japanese leather from Misunara round off the elegant appearance and adds to the marketing impact of yet another, but still pretty rare Misunara finished whiskey out there. But the sad certainty that this whiskey won't be around for a long time remains. And I can only recommend to get a bottle as long as you have the chance to. Those coconut and pineapple flavors that come from the Misonara finish, you gotta try that. That finish, by the way, perfectly took care of that harsh and wooden aftertaste that Whiskey Jason was talking about. So, well done Glendalach, good job. Gary McLachlin from Glendalach Distillery, who sent me this awesome t-shirt, thanks again man, told me that there will be a 17-year-old Misunara finished Glendalach that might be available already, looks like this. Awesome design, but obviously will be a lot more expensive than the 13-year-old. In the next episodes, Mr. Smith will be joining us again, who will contribute a rare bottle of whiskey from the Isle of Isla. And I will take you along on a movie production day to a whiskey, gin and beer academy I am making an image video for. A place we will hear a lot about in the near future, because Mr. Smith and me are going back to school. In the meanwhile, stay tough, stay healthy. Please recommend our channel as I recommend myself as your Bernie Gator. <laughs>so our channel can keep growing. Maybe you know someone interested in all things whiskey that you can recommend us to. Check out our playlist, Vlogs in English. Each click and every minute playtime does help. And we do enjoy each and every comment, so please feel free. Please take the chance to subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell, so you will be notified whenever something's going on. It's all free. Thank you.